Hey guys, what's up and I welcome you all to a new League of Legends video. So season 5 has been active for a few weeks now and I want to ask all of you how are your ranked games going, especially solo queue? Are you getting lucky and maybe winning every single game? Are you just simply carrying it? Are you getting unlucky or are you just having a bad game over and over again? Are you on tilt? What is your exact scenario? For me, I hit Diamond 4 pretty fast, so I started off quite well, but as of the past few days or week, I've been not getting so lucky in solo queue, whether it's me playing bad or just constantly getting teammates that are just feeding or having horrible games. And I try playing as many champions as I can in order to carry, whether it's Ari, whether it's Zed, whether maybe it's Yasuo, LeBlanc, Lissandra, and a lot of these champions, I'm really not having the easiest time to carry, well, at least not as easy as I feel like it should be. So I kind of went back to thinking about what champion should I really start playing a lot more often in solo queue that can just simply dominate these games and have a lot of pressure. And the first champion that instantly came to my mind was Twisted Fate. Now this is a champion I have been playing for quite some time, but recently I've been picking him up a lot more often. And truly I do believe he's probably one of the best champions in solo queue in terms of just having so much pressure around the whole map and just offering so much for his team. So I really wanted to make this video talking more in depth about Twisted Fate, giving you my positives, my negatives, runes, masteries, and even the recommended item build. This is a champion I highly recommend picking up if you want to start having more impact on your games from the mid lane. On top of that, compared to someone like Ariel or Sandra, he's almost never banned. And plus, the current meta is really not that bad for him, so he overall just fits this meta and is just a strong champion for solo queue. So let's quickly touch on the positives a bit more. The first thing is his passive, giving him so much more gold when he farms, which is great because he's naturally just a solid farmer. I love how his Q does full damage to every single target hit, no matter how many targets are hit, as opposed to something like an Ezreal ultimate decreasing in damage per target hit. This makes wave clearing and just overall team fights quite ideal. Speaking of him being a great farmer, one way I sort of decide whether or not I'm behind is if I can use my red card on the melee minion wave coming at me and then I throw my Q and it clears the whole wave including the casters, I'm either ahead or at least on par of where I should be. Like I said his ultimate, probably one of the main reasons why I love TF because he can instantly teleport almost anywhere on the map, counter a gang from the enemy jungle or assist in a fight to make a 1v1 into a 2v1 or a 2v2 into a 3v2 or whatever the case may be. Has a lot of options with his W of course, mana sustain in lane with his blue card or more damage. He has the red card for AoE and slow, then you have the gold card for a single target lockdown. I've said this in so many videos, options are good. One thing I recommend with TF is when you teleport to try and have your E passive ready so when you teleport in for an assist or a gank, well you'll just do so much more damage on your first auto attack. And if on top of that you have a Lich Bane then oh boy you will be chunking the squishies. Overall TF is a great solo Q champion, his kit is just designed to take people and punish them for mistakes. Or if they were to just overextend a little too far. So next let's touch a bit on his cons because as great of a champion as he is, there are some negatives. The first one being that he is a very difficult champion to play, not really someone you can just instantly pick up and just do so well with. The reason for that is because being able to manage his W properly can be very difficult, especially in a very high intensive team fight. He's a very squishy champion, so if you ever get CC'd or locked down, well you're gonna get bursted quite fast, since his abilities aren't the farthest of ranges, or at least not something like a Zerath, and his W is an auto attacking ranged ability. Also his laning phase not the very best, and the first 6 levels against someone like an Ari or maybe a Zed can be very difficult. He does only have 2 active spells for damage, his Q and his W, the rest is the ultimate obviously not dealing damage and his E only every 4 auto attacks so you have to be able to utilize this properly. And finally his passive and as great and amazing as it is and I absolutely love it, eventually it becomes quite irrelevant when you're full build. Now I'm sure most of you are curious what items you want to build on ABTF. I'll give you guys 2 build paths, the first one being the one that I personally prefer and is going a bit for more raw damage. So the starting build, Dorans or Boots, that's the big question, well if you're some Somewhat confident in the laning phase and you don't feel like you'll lose or you have a lot of skill shots to dodge, well Doran's ring is the option to go. If you feel like you're facing someone that you'll have to keep dodging side to side and you might need a bit more sustain, maybe like a Zerath or something of the sort, well boots are probably the better option. Regardless, the Rabadons into Lich Bane are the first two core items you want to get. Following that, upgrade your boots, get the Zhonyas, the Void Staff and finish it off with a Morello Namacon for the 20% CDR. And as a very final thing, at the very end of the build, you can sell the Sorg boots for lucidity boots to get the 40%. Oh, and one thing I want to mention, I actually get ghost and flash on Twisted Fate because positioning is everything on this champion and if you don't have ghost, well, it can make things a lot more difficult, so I highly recommend picking those summoner spells up. 
The second build is going to be somewhat similar, but it's going for the 40% CDR much sooner. As you see, you get the Morella Namacon into Lucidity Boots as the first items. I will not go too much into this build as I don't personally prefer it, but if you want to have more map pressure with your ultimate, this is the build you want to go, but keep in mind the damage output will not be as high. For the Masteries, I go quite the standard 2109, but keep in mind I put 3 points in the Utility Tree into the move speed, not the Mana Regen. And the reason is because I think move speed is ridiculously important on Twisted Fate, and you can see in my room page I also run 3 move speed quints. Flat magic pen reds, a mix of HP per level and flat HP yellows, and I top it off with AP per level blues. The reason for these blues is because if you run MR blues instead, well, you're gonna have 0 AP for level 1, and that's gonna be a little awkward. So that right there is my TF build, and one I really recommend picking up for you guys. So that is it for this video guys, I hope you have learned something new and maybe got an inspiration to try out the card master. I wanna wish all of you good luck in solo queue because I know I need it as well. Don't forget to hit the like button if you did enjoy the video, share it with your friends, and I really hope to see you guys for the next video as well. Peace.